Hey guys, welcome back to week 10 and 11 of the Bomber Budget Build. Gonna double up this week because I'm gonna be on vacation for two weeks to go get married and go on a honeymoon. So right now, today, Friday, I'm getting married. The week after this, I'll be in Costa Rica. Then I'll come back and I'll get caught up on this thing. But for now, you guys get two weeks at once on this so that we can keep rolling with the series. Last week, we came in and we did some upgrading to the front axle and one to the rear axle. We came in and did an HD truss, one piece servo mount, and some servo clamps to make sure that that front steering system is as rigid as it can possibly be. That plastic setup that was up front had a little bit of flex to it and we wanted to eliminate that. This week, we're again going to work on the axles. What we're going to do this week is install one of the Vanquish Wraith Stage 1 kits. Now, the Wraith kit, AR60 axles, exact same thing, so everything bolts right onto this rig. What that Stage 1 kit includes is front knuckles, C-hubs, and rear lockouts. I'm gonna go with the blue because the bomber just has a lot of blue on it already. Don't wanna start clashing with orange or anything like that. Now the front C-hubs on this car are basically an aluminum replacement C-hub. The front knuckle has a little bit higher steering arm to give you a little bit more clearance up front. Now we'll talk about the installation of that and a couple of little tricks that we'll get into once we get down to the installation. In the rear, we're going to install a set of lockouts and the Vanquish lockouts are a clamping lockout, which is an awesome, awesome feature if you guys have ever used any of our clamping systems. Now the rear lockout that we're going to install is a clamping lockout. The clamping lockout is what's included in all of our stage one kits for the Wraith and it makes the installation of them super snug. You will not have a loose lockout when you have that clamping lockout system. No matter, as the housing starts to wear in, as plastic housings do, you can tighten it up a little bit more and that lockout will stay nice and solid, never having any wiggle in the rear. A nice feature and something that you don't get with other lockouts. So let's get into the installation of this kit, go over how it goes together and a couple little tips that will be handy to know. Along with the Stage 1 kit, we are going to also be installing a set of the Vanquish Brass Knuckle Bushings. These will replace the steel ones that come with the stock kit. First, we're going to remove all four of the wheels and tires. Remove the hexes by loosening that set screw and then pulling it off of your stub axle. Then remove the hex pin and set those aside as well. We'll also need to disconnect all of the steering linkage from the front axle so that we can have easier access to the knuckles. Remove the two screws on each of the C-hubs and rear lockouts so that we can easily pull the entire assembly off all at once. In the rear, we will also need to remove one of the link mount screws to allow that inner axle shaft to pass through there without binding up on the flange. Now we'll have the entire stock knuckles, C-hub, and lockout assembly removed. Separate the knuckle from the C-hub so that we can remove that inner axle shaft as well as we are going to reuse the bearings used in that stock knuckle. We can now reinsert the rear axle shaft making sure that it's engaged in the locker. The Vanquish clamping lockout can be installed with the clamping portion pointing towards the front or towards the rear. Towards the front's a little cleaner look when looking at it from the rear. Towards the back will help keep debris out of that clamping area which can work its way into the axle over time. Install the 3mm screw and lock nut to engage the clamping portion. Reinstall the screws securing the lockouts and C-hubs to the axle housing. At this time we can also reinstall that screw on the rear axle that secures the link mounts in place. Note that on the front C-hubs, the longer portion of the C-hub should be on the bottom. We can now reinsert our inner axle shaft in the front. When reinstalling the bearings into the knuckles, it helps to reuse that stock stub axle to align the bearing, pushing it into place a little bit easier. Since these are an 8 degree hub, they don't go in exactly flush with the rear face, which is why that can sometimes be difficult for people. We'll now install the Vanquish brass bushings into our new knuckles. These are a little bit tighter fit and will not wear the aluminum like the steel can. Install the knuckle onto that inner C-hub, making sure that your inner axle shaft seats properly. 
Make sure to use some Loctite when installing the knuckles onto those inner C-hubs. Use the provided flathead screws to attach the knuckle arm onto the front side of the Wraith knuckles. We can then reinstall the hex pin and 12mm hex, tightening that set screw to keep it in place. Reinstall your steering linkage with the tie rod below the knuckle arm and the drag link above. Then it's time for us to reinstall the wheels and tires. So the basic installation of the kit, pretty simple. Now, as I said in the installation, there's a couple of little things that are handy to know. The first thing that's important to know is when you're installing these knuckles with stock wheels, you can get some rubbing on that upper rod end at the wheel. And you wanna make sure to take a look at that and make sure that it's not too bad. Stock wheels, sometimes like on this build, we're still at the point where we're running those, but you can absolutely run this with stock wheels still. What I did is I came in and just smoothed out that inner lip of that wheel a little bit and that rod end kind of self clearances itself. And after that, everything spins nice and smooth and there's nothing to worry about. Also, another important thing to note is that when you install knuckles like this, it's a good thing to go through and make sure that you adjust your steering endpoint. These knuckles will allow you to get a little bit more steering. So if you've got your endpoints turned down, make sure that you double check those to see if there's any extra that you can get before anything starts to bind. The incision VDI axles that we installed in previous weeks allow for about 47 to 48 degrees of steering total. So so you can safely run about that much steering before you start to add any additional stresses to your axle shafts or servo. Also you may see some blue up there on the servo now. I did change to one of my Futaba servos as I do plan to go racing tomorrow. Last week I did talk about the servo options that I would suggest for this car, something to look at, something to think about when you guys are buying your servo for your car and how far exactly you want to upgrade. It's important to look at where you're going to run your truck and how hard you're going to push it. At this point, this truck is becoming better and better every week and upgrades are going to be harder and harder to find, especially that fit our budget. Tires and wheels are going to be a big one, but a full tire and wheel package is not cheap, especially when we're really going to focus on performance. So everything needs to really be looked at from the wheel and offset to the foam that's going to go inside of whatever tires we choose as well. So we've got a lot of thinking to do. For a few of you guys who have inquired about the U4 racing setup I'm doing, again, I'm running the Tekken RX-8 Gen 2 speed control Tekken Pro 4 3000 HD motor, and I'm running Maxamp's 4000 milliamp 3S LiPo packs. My radio, right now I'm using my 4PL. I really like that 4PL radio. Uh, I also have a 4PX here. I find myself using that 4PL a lot more often just because of uh, especially how much I trail ride. I like to carry that radio because it's not nearly as high value as that 4PX. For racing, I really should be running my 4PX, but for right now, uh, I still have this thing set up to run on my 4PL. Thanks again for watching, guys. Thanks for all the support and all the comments on the budget build videos. It's always one of the most popular builds that we do. So with that, thanks for watching. We'll see you in a couple of weeks.